Okay, welcome. And I'm holding a card that says proven headline templates for faster, profitable prospecting. Now, what's profitable prospecting? It is a way to make money as you're getting new people to take a closer look of what you're doing. I'm Alex Mondosian, and I've been doing master classes now for the past 25 years. And whether you're watching on video or you're listening on audio or you're reading, a headline is probably your most powerful tool to get attention, not to sell what you have to offer, but to get attention so people can dig deeper into what you have to offer. And then hopefully that'll be a lifelong relationship so that it's not just transactional, but it's relational and sustainable so that you have ongoing monthly recurring revenue. That's the point. So here's the first question. What is a headline template? <clears throat> How would you define a headline template? Well, a headline template is more powerful than just a headline. A headline template is a blueprint, is a format where most of the words are already written for you. And psychologically, by applying psychology, it's attracting and luring, ensnaring the attention of someone that you want to discriminate in your favor. They have alternatives to go elsewhere. Hopefully you have competition, otherwise you don't have a business. So the purpose of the headline is to have them choose, them being the prospect, choose you over someone else, and that's where you make a profit. There is profitable prospecting, and then there is unprofitable prospecting. Unprofitable means that you got attention, but you're spending more money than you're actually making in the prospect to buyer conversion process. But if you have the right headlines, and if you use templates, you'll save money, and you don't have to start from scratch when you're looking at a blank page or a blank screen trying to figure out what to write. So a template is a, a pre-written or predefined headline that you're putting in certain words for your offer and it'll save you um, hours, even days of, of time um, because you know that they're working. Proven is the key. Proven means it's worked over time and some of the headlines that you'll be seeing today and I'll be giving you a two-page PDF of 27 headline templates that have been working for the past 100 years. There's no reason to do uh, and write or utter any headline other than the 27 templates that are, that are there, and you'll get that near the end of this masterclass. If you're reading it, you can go to the very end and see the special link to get it. It's free. Um, if you're listening, then you can fast forward and get it. But what I want you to do right now is keep watching, listening, or reading because there are three types of headlines I want you to be aware of. There's the super headline, and the super headline is typically right above the core headline. It's important to define certain things that, so that you're not intimidated when people are throwing around terms, especially in the marketing world because there's all these marketing speak terms that intimidate people. And many people are afraid to ask, what does that mean? What's a super headline? Is it a really good headline? No, a super headline is the headline above the core headline. So for example, attention, coaches, consultants, and service professionals. So a super headline is calling out the target audience. That's what I like to utilize the super headline for. You may see it at the very top. Or um, if you're suffering from a lack of sleep, read this ad, right? That's a super headline. That could be the core headline, but the super headline I like to use as a hook to identify the problem um, or the chief complaint that your viewer, your listener, or your reader is struggling with. So that's what a super headline is. It's the headline above the core headline. Now, what you're probably most familiar with is the core headline. And the core headline <clears throat> is the main headline that um, is getting the attention of your prospect so that you can turn that prospect into a profitable uh, transaction, hopefully a profitable relationship for as long as possible. So there's the super headline above, which calls out the target audience. The core headline is focusing on the, the problem that you're handling, not just the solution, but the problem. And then <clears throat> the subheadline is what goes underneath the core headline. 
So there's really three types of headlines. There's probably many more, but those are the three different species that I want you to be aware of. The super is above the core headline. The core headline is identifying the problem and possibly the solution in one sentence. And then the sub headline is underneath that so that they keep reading. The purpose of the super headline is to read the headline. The purpose of the, the core headline um, is to read the sub headline and the purpose of the sub headline is to read the first sentence or listen uh, or watch, right? Headlines can be expressed on video, on audio and in the written words. So three types of headlines and you don't have to use all three, but if you do know what they are and that's why I've defined them up front, I hope that's useful because a sub headline is like the subtitle to a book. So some books um, have one title, Think and Grow Rich. Okay, there's no subtitle. Um, another uh, famous book uh, that just has one uh, title is How to Win Friends and Influence People, Dale Carnegie. But most books have subtitles. And the subtitle of a book, if you've ever written a book or promised to write a book, then ultimately that's the promise of the book. The title is what the book is and the subtitle is what the book does. So really it's a headline and a, a sub headline or subtitle. So for example, my book, which is a lead generation tool, it's called Alexisms. That's the title, Alexisms. <clears throat> I think you should have a, an isms book as well with your name. Um, I have many students who have written their own, but the subtitle is useful life lessons of a recovering serial entrepreneur. That's me. And so <clears throat> the subtitle is the promise. So useful life lessons from a recovering serial entrepreneur. A ser serial entrepreneur is an entrepreneur that some people brag about that they love being a serial entrepreneur, but I find it not to be very productive because you go from one project to the next, never really committing to a specific topic or brand that you're known for. And so that's why I wrote the book almost um, like a mini recovery and, and healing process because I've been a serial entrepreneur for over 30 years. Now, another question, okay? Why do headline templates lead to profitable prospecting? Well, prospecting is probably the single most expensive cost you have in marketing your business. And if you don't have a business, when you're starting up a business, um, the headline is gonna be your tool. But why is a headline, or why do headlines lead to profitable prospecting? Is because the way to make profits is for people to pay you money. And the first step to paying you money is getting their attention. So you wanna ensnare attention first before you're having someone part with their money. If you don't have the attention, then you're not gonna get someone, see, that's my, uh, that's my alarm going off right now. So, and that's a headline, by the way. <laughs> that's, that got my attention, and um, I'm sure it got yours as well if you heard it. So, the, the key to the headline is to turn the prospect into a profitable transaction and ultimately a relationship. Next question is, how do headline templates guarantee readership um, or um, newsworthiness, right? That th there are different types of headlines. You can have a question, you can have a challenge, you can make it a promise, you can make it newsworthy. For example, a news headline would be, um, every week 30,000 people suffer from diabetes, are you one of them? That's a, that's a headline that's both a combination of a question and newsworthy, right? And if you're wondering if, you're gonna ever struggle or suffer from diabetes, I have family members who do, then you're gonna to continue to read. The goal of the headline also is to polarize the reader or the listener or the viewer so that you get rid of the people who have no intention of working or buying from you. Let's say a vegetarian and you're selling gourmet hamburgers, you wanna get rid of the vegetarian reader, viewer or listener because they're of no use to you. So if 100 people are getting exposed to your headline, if two of them are interested in reading the ad or reading the marketing communication, then you're doing really, really well. The more people you expose the headline to, the more people who will say yes. And through profitable prospecting, you can get referrals, 
Um, you can get joint venture partnerships where other people who've said yes to you are referring friends, family, colleagues to you as well. So it all starts with the headline or the attention grabber. So here's the first key point. Headlines pre-qualify prospects for faster profit generation. Now, the goal is profit, not just revenue. I mean, revenue is the money that comes in, but profit is the difference between the revenue and the cost of sale. So if you're making 20 or 30% profit, you're doing really, really well. If you're in the digital marketing world, then many times you could make uh, 60, even 70% profit. If you're a manufacturer, um, it's good if you make 10% profit. And if you're in the, the software business, you probably have 80 to 90% profit, depending on how much you're spending on advertising to capture attention. But the pre-qualification part is not just people who are ideal for what you're offering, but it's getting rid of the people who have no business in wasting their time and you know, reading or listening or viewing what you have to offer. So it's disqualification and pre-qualification at the same time. Now, here's another key point. Headlines are the most effective way to guarantee viewership. So the, the first thing is getting attention. The next thing is getting people to read it or to view it. If they're listening to you, like let's say on a podcast, I have a podcast called All Selling Aside, um, I always start with a headline on what the topic of that specific episode is. Now, if you want to get access to All Selling Aside, just go to allsellingaside.com and every single week you'll get over 25 years of uh, marketing uh, know-how and uh, time-proven tips in 25-minute clips, 25 minutes uh, chunked into the topic that I'm um, focusing on for that particular week. So you can go to allsellingaside.com and you can check out the notes and you can also go to iTunes and subscribe through iTunes and get it week after week. Now, five headline templates that are proven to boost your views, your listenership, if it's audio, and readership. So there's viewing, there's listening, and there's also reading. In the old days, it just to, it only used to be readership. So guaranteeing readership, if you get a letter in the mail, some people call it junk mail, but it's been happening for you know, over 150 years, it keeps coming in and they want you to read whatever marketing communication they have because without reading it, then there's no likelihood that you're gonna buy it. So how do you guarantee viewership? How do you guarantee um, readership? How do you guarantee listenership? How do you get them to keep going? Well, let's say if you do a Facebook Live, you can start with a question. For example, um, are you spending too much money and not making enough profit on your Facebook advertising? Okay, so let's say you started your Facebook Live with what I just said, with that question. Well, if the answer is yes, they're going to keep watching. If the answer is no, they're not going to watch. So what you want to do with Facebook in this case is get people to unmute because that's the default. Um, Mark Zuckerberg and his team have um, decided that mute is the default for a Facebook Live when you're watching it. Um, hopefully you're listening to me right now because I could still be on mute. And so that's why when I start a show um, for every Friday, which is always at marketingonline.com forward slash Friday live. It's a revolving URL. Every time I have a show, I start with a card that says, stand by, this Facebook Live starts in, now that's a headline, and then I do a countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. Now, why do I, why do, I do a countdown? Because there's more tension than doing a count up versus one, two, three, four, five, right? And then I give a card that shows uh, people to turn up the volume. Because if they're not listening, they being you, then they're not going to be interested. And so starting a show that way versus diving in on Facebook Live, anyway, is the fastest and easiest way to get attention. And then the final card says, welcome to Facebook Fridays Live. And whether you're watching live or the recording, then you know, hey, Facebook Fridays, 
Well, then Alex Mondosian has a Facebook Live every Friday at 12 noon Pacific, 3 p.m. East Coast time. Those sequence of cards that I just demonstrated, that ends up becoming uh, a headline, a sequence of headlines to get people to listen, again, getting attention for listenership. Now, viewership is one thing, but if I'm on mute, then I'm not really getting my point across until you can hear me. Now, I know this is common sense, but these are little things I want you to think about if you're serious about building your business and profitable prospecting. So here is um, a template, and a template is where most of the words are already written, but you just fill in the topic. In this case, the template is the most important, and then you put in your topic, news in, and then the time frame. So, for example, the most important news about the Bible in the last 340 years, okay? So, the topic would be the Bible. If people aren't interested in the Bible, then they take uh, they would not be listening, watching, or reading, right? So, you're pre-qualifying. And then the time is 340 years. Now, is that interesting? Well, it could be for you to read the ne next sentence, but this is a template. The most important... You put um, the topic and then news in the time frame. The, the most important breakthrough in digital marketing in the past 23 years. So there's the template, and I'm just putting in the topic and the time frame. So that's one template. Here's another one. Have, and then the result that you want, you can be proud of. Okay. Have a trained dog you can be proud of. Have children you can be proud of. Um, have a, a, a complexion that you can be proud of. Those are all different products and offers. I'm making them up as I'm speaking, but that's the template that you can uh, go back to again and again. So have, you want the result, you know, clear skin, you can be proud of. Have a full head of hair, you can be proud of, all right? Depending on whatever product or service you're offering. Here's another template, number three. Why now is the right time to, and then put in the result. Why now is the right time to learn how to write headlines? Okay, that's the result. Why now is the right time to think about your finances? Why now is the right time to think about having children? Why now is the right time um, to uh, have a cat? <laughs> so that's the template. And you can change that template depending on your topic and whatever business you're in. The fourth template, and there are many, many templates. I'm going to give you access to 27 of them. I'm covering five right now. And it's almost as if I'm, I am teasing you so that you get all 27. They're free, and I'll give you the special URL. And you can get it by phone as well if you have a mobile phone in North America. But I'll give you the, the URL um, at the end of this master class. This, here's... Template number four, the secret to, and then the activity in X easy steps. Okay, what does that mean? How do you utilize this template? The secret to um, buying silver in five easy steps. The secret to a gourmet meal or cooking a gourmet meal, that's the activity, in three easy steps. The secret to writing world-class headlines in five easy steps. I'm showing you five templates. That could be a headline for this masterclass. And here's the fifth template. Here's a brand new breakthrough in, and then the topic. Here's a brand new breakthrough in personal finances. Here's a brand new breakthrough um, in digital marketing. Here's a brand new breakthrough in weight loss. So the topic is what you put in and the template is what saves you lots of time. These are proven. So the key point is templates of any type, whether it's a headline template or uh, it's a um, productivity template, they save you time and money. Now, saving money is one thing, but if you're like me, you've lost money over the years. You, you can always make money back, I have, but losing time is even more valuable. When people are broke and I say, uh, and I ask them, what's more important to you, you know, time or money? And they'll say money, because that's 
what they're going after because they're broke or bankrupt. But once people have money, if you ask any millionaire or billionaire, what's the most valuable thing that you have? The answer is time. Why? Because you can't get time back. You got 86,400 seconds a day. You have 1,440 um, minutes in a day. You have 52 weeks in a year. You have 168 hours per week. You can never get it back. And we all have the same amount of time. And time, of course, is the earth going around the sun. And that's one year, right? And then we have a leap year um, every four years, right? So like 365 days, um, that's a year. And everyone seems to have a, a finite amount of time, regardless of your spiritual persuasion. Time is more valuable than money when you're looking at making a difference here on earth. And when it comes to writing headlines and capturing attention, you want to save time so that you can test and find which headlines are working and which are not. Some headlines have worked for over 40 years. There was a headline written by um, a copywriter that worked for 40 years. They never changed it. Uh, do you make these mistakes in English? Now, the headline originally was, do you make mistakes in English? That headline didn't work. The moment they put in the word these, do you make these mistakes in English? What does the word these or this, what does that do to, to your psychology? You're looking down and you're looking at the ad, if you're reading it. In this case, it was a, a written ad. It was a, it was a magazine ad, full-page magazine ad. And it was, a, it was an English course. And these mistakes were examples of mistakes that people make. And so to avoid embarrassment, um, to look smarter, um, they want to know how to speak better English, if that's the market that you're in. If English is a second language, I have over 50% of my student body comes from outside of North America. So English is their second language. Do you make these mistakes in English is a headline that works because the word these gets the, the reader, the viewer, the listener to continue um, to view, read, and listen because the word these is um, a headline word that's capturing attention and they're curious about what these mistakes are. So one word can change the entire uh, tra trajectory of a business. In this case, it was um, a, an English course, uh, a course on how to um, speak better and write better English. Do you make these mistakes in English? Now that's a template. Do you make these mistakes in Spanish? Do you make these mistakes in your business? Do you make these mistakes uh, with parenting? The word these will get people to read, listen, and view further. Is that making sense? I hope so, because one word can make all the difference in the world. Now, David Ogilvy, his, who's one of my idols, I never met the man, but he was a great ad man um, on Madison Avenue in New York City. And uh, many years ago, he said, when, you, when you've written your headline, then that is making up, it, it, it's, it's allowing you to spend 80 cents of every dollar on your ad, right? So once you've written your headline, you're spending 80 cents out of your dollar, meaning the headline is worth, you know, 80% of whatever marketing communication you have. I think that's low. I think it's over 90%. Because if you look at the way people read magazines, just flipping pages, you know, if, if you're on an airplane or you, you see people on a, on a park bench and you, they're just flipping through uh, the pages of a magazine, if, if you're advertising in a magazine, is it any wonder that people actually buy stuff? So the headline is what is gonna capture attention, like in a newspaper, right? Newspapers have headlines. You probably see them all the time. And that's what gets you to continue to read. The goal of the headline is consumption, consuming the marketing communication so that you can learn more and then ultimately become a buyer. That's profitable prospecting. Now, the translation of David Ogilvy's quote, spending 80 cents on every dollar is the headline, is a headline is five times, five times, as important as the rest of your marketing communication. So if you're gonna focus on communicating an offer to sell your product or service, or if it's for your own consulting, then whatever headlines you use, whether spoken or written or on video, 
those headlines are five times as important if you're spending 80 cents on the dollar, right? They're five times as important as the rest of the ad. Most people spend most of the time writing the ad, but yet that's 20% of the decision if you believe in what David Ogilvy said. I do, and I think his number is low. I think the headline is worth over 90% of uh, the intention of the marketing communication. Now, the purpose of any headline is to keep viewing, listening, or reading. Now, I've been saying this again and again, and even though I say it, many people have creative amnesia and forget. So the purpose of the headline is not to sell your offer. It's not to sell your services. The purpose of the headline is to get people to continue to read or to view or to listen, depending on what format the advertisement is in. It could be a free advertisement. It could be a podcast or listening in most cases, but the purpose of it is to continue to consume. If you're watching right now on video, if you're reading, if you're listening, then I've maintained and suspended your attention to continue to learn more and more about headlines. And so that means it's working. For those people who have left, well, this is irrelevant to them. They either think they know how to do it, which they probably do. I'm not the best headline writer in the world, but I'm better than most. And if they're not watching, they're not here, I'm not speaking to them. I'm glad that they've gone because I've said something that they know it's not relevant to them, or at least they think it's not relevant to them. It may not be. But if you're watching or listening or reading, that means what I've said has interested you and you want to continue to watch, listen, or read. Does that make sense? You're here, so what I'm saying is working for you. Now, the big mistake people make is they think the headline should be global. It should be um, appealing to everyone. That's exactly the worst way to write a headline. That's a way not to be a profitable prospecting business owner or entrepreneur. Because if you're everything to everyone, then you're nothing to no one. The goal of the headline is to pre-qualify people who are ideal buyers and disqualify non-ideal buyers. All right, three bad assumptions that dilute. It means taking um, the effectiveness out of um, the persuasion power of a headline. These are assumptions that people believe in. Over the years, I've found that assumptions are probably the worst thing you can have if, if the assumption is a bad one because the assumption is your premise or your belief about something. For example, if you have the assumption that a headline is meant to sell your product, that's a bad assumption because you'll write the headline to sell the product versus to consume your marketing communication. The reason I say marketing communication, because this is not just an ad writing, which is typically an expense, it's a cost to buy advertising. This can be in everything that you do, every blog post, every podcast, episode, every um, LinkedIn or Facebook post or Twitter tweet, and everything that you do, if you think in headlines, then you're not wasting words that are ineffective. You want to not only do things right, which is efficiency, you want to do the right things, which is effectiveness. You know, efficiency is about productivity, you know, doing things right. Effectiveness is about priority, doing the right things. So, an assumption is something that you're basing your behavior on. And if you have the, a bad assumption, then you're not going to be successful in, in whatever business you're in. Now, assumption number one is headlines are created to sell the offer. Well, that's an unhappiness, unhappy face statement. I'm, I'm holding a card up if you're reading or listening. And it says assumption number one, headlines are created to sell the offer. No, they're not. Headlines are created by you or a template you've borrowed from um, proven winners of the past. They're created to get people to consume your marketing communication. They're created to get attention to continue to read, view, or listen. It's probably the 10th the time I've said that, but I want it to sink in because that's a bad assumption to try to sell your offer with the headline because the headline can't do that work you need the rest of the marketing communication to do that work. The headline is just to ensnare and capture attention so they keep consuming. Assumption number two, bad assumption. Headlines should be brief 
and specific. Now, many marketers have taught that um, a headline that's specific is better than a headline that's not specific. Well, that's not true. If you have an ambiguous headline, it could spark curiosity and they can keep reading. If you know the intention of a headline, which is assumption number one, headlines are meant to have people continue consuming your marketing message. Well, do they have to be specific and brief? No, they don't have to be. I, I know headlines that have been um, over 30 words that have worked. So they don't have to be brief and they don't, e they don't even have to be specific. They just have to capture attention so people keep viewing, reading, and listening. Assumption number three, and this is a flawed assumption, is that always begin an ad um, or always begin a marketing communication, always begin a message as it relates to business by writing your headlines first. Uh, many copywriters that I've learned from say that they write a bunch of headlines first, like 50 or 60 of them, and then they start writing the ad. I cannot agree with that. It does not work for me. I don't recommend that you start with the headline. That's like naming the book first. Many times the name of the book comes after having written the book. And doesn't it make more sense that you've written an ad and then based on what you've written in that ad or marketing communication, no matter how long or how brief it is, then you come up with the headline when you're done. Because that way you're not paying, playing pin the tail on the donkey with someone else's attention. Now, if you're outside the US, pin the tail on the donkey is a game that kids play where they blindfold the kid and then they try to pin a, this, this tail, this imaginary tail, usually it's paper, on, on the butt of the donkey, right? And the one who comes closest wins, but they're blindfolded. Unless you cheat, which I used to do at birthday parties and always win. <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not proud of that, but uh, playing pin the tail on the donkey is, is being blind to what you could be yielding as far as attention goes and, and, and capturing the heart of your prospect so that that prospect can become profitable versus remaining non-profitable. So if you wrote headlines first, I think that's a bad assumption because um, I don't believe you can get your best headline by just writing a bunch of them. I'd rather have a bunch of headline templates, write the marketing communication, speak it or um, record it, on video, whatever format you're using. And then when you're done, now you know what you have. Now it's time to write the headline. In fact, many times the headline will be buried deep in the ad. Uh, many times um, in the uh, 400th line of an ad, I've found my headline. And how can you start with writing headlines if, if you're starting blind? because I think that's just gonna cause uh, confusion and it'll be trouble and struggle for you. So that assumption of writing your headline first, as many people have uh, in the marketing world, uh, they've advised students, I think that's a mistake. I think if you gave it a, a, a try, if you have headline templates like you're gonna get at the end of this masterclass, why not suspend the um, process of writing the headline first, write the ad, and write it all the way through without editing, come back, edit it, and then write the headlines last. And many times you'll be writing the headline as you're writing the ad, if it's a written ad. Same goes with video, same goes with audio. So those are three, I think, erroneous assumptions. The first one is headlines are created to sell the offer. No, they're not. They're created to get attention about the offer, to keep reading or viewing or listening. Assumption number two is headlines should be brief and specific. They don't have to be brief and they don't even have to be specific. They can be ambiguous just to capture curiosity and having people consume your marketing communication. And bad assumption number three is always begin the ad writing process or any post by writing a bunch of headlines. I think that's a bad assumption. Uh, people much smarter than I have said um, that as their their biggest secret to writing copy. But most people are not professional copywriters. And I believe if you write the headline last, it's kind of like writing the book after you've written the book, writing the title to the book after you're done writing. Now, I don't know if this is true or not, but I heard that when Napoleon Hill wrote Think and Grow Rich, um, the original title prior to submitting it to his publisher was uh, Make a Boodle with Your Noodle. 
That's what I heard. Now, it could be wrong. It could be um, just a myth. But let's, let's say it's true. Make a boodle, which is a lot, with your noodle, right? That is not as a powerful of a, of a title as think and grow rich. Now, both titles kind of say the same thing, but make a boodle with your noodle is uh, not understandable, um, even in the United States. And over time, what does boodle mean? That may change. Now, back in the 1920s and 30s, maybe boodle was a common term, but I've never heard anyone use that term. But I've heard of think and grow rich, and that book is sold year after year without advertising, because of the headline of the book, which is the title. There's no subtitle. There's just Think and Grow Rich. So I think it was a good decision because if Napoleon Hill went with the original title, if it's true, make a boodle with your noodle and didn't change it to Think and Grow Rich, you possibly would have never heard of the book and many people would never have read the book. And that book has changed many, many lives. I know uh, one friend of mine, uh, Bob Proctor, he rereads Think and Grow Rich every single year. And I think he's, he's read it over 40 times. I don't think he would have read Make a Boodle with Your Noodle, but Think and Grow Rich is something that made all the difference. Imagine reading the book because of the title, right? Don't judge a book by its title. That's also a false assumption. Everybody judges a book by their title. Everyone I know. And if they don't, then they're lying, in my opinion. Now, here's the key point. False assumptions lead to false assumptions lead to uncertainty and unmet expectations. Now, what does that key point mean? Well, if you're like any other human being, you want more certainty in your life. You want more security in your life. If you live in a home, certainty is having a lock on the door. If you're driving a car, certainty is um, having um, a lock on that car. So what's important is having uncertainty causes tension and causes stress. So if you have a false assumption, like the three I just mentioned, you're going to have more uncertainty. You're not going to know what works versus what doesn't work. You want to keep doing what works and you want to stop doing what doesn't work. And then unmet expectations means that if you're expecting to make a profit from your advertising or from your posts or from your marketing communications, then if you're doing things that are working, then your expectations are met and you'll be more profitable with your prospecting. So watch your assumptions. I've given you at least three or four that I know are false for me. Watch what assumptions that you're holding to be true because once you change them and they become assumptions that um, support you, it will change the direction that you go. You could finally turn a profit if you haven't in the past. Now, what are six proven hooks? Uh, now, a headline is a hook. It hooks your mind. It hooks the prospect's mind. What are six proven hooks that influence more profitable prospecting? Like, how do you make profits from prospecting? And what are the hooks in headlines? Well, there are different types of headlines. There are different species of headlines. And one of those is the process headline. Now, what's a process headline? Well, that's what I call it. Here's one, how to win friends and influence people. The how-to headline is a great way to start. How to make money by working less. How to get your kids to sleep uh, eight hours a day. How to cook a, a gourmet meal, okay? So that's a process headline. Hook number two is a question headline. So these are different types of headlines. The question headline is, do you make these mistakes in English? Now, I mentioned this earlier. Do you make these mistakes in English, the keyword being these, that's a question headline. Do you make these mistakes in finances? Do you make these mistakes at work? Do you make these mistakes with parenting? Do you make these mistakes with your marriage? They will continue to read if that topic is interesting to them. Headline hook number three is the number headline. Now, what's a number headline? Well, here's an example. Five ways to boost your productivity. Okay, that's a template. The number is the number five, right? It could be three ways to boost your energy. Um, uh, seven ways to reduce your anxiety. So it could be moving away. 
like reduce, eliminate, or it can be moving toward boost or enhance something you're moving toward. You decide moving away, moving toward doesn't matter. What matters most is using a number because that creates curiosity and people will keep reading, listening, or viewing. Then there's the hook of the news headline. Now, here's an example I used earlier. The most important global, um, well, the most important news in, in the past 340 years, I was mentioning the Bible earlier, the most important news about the Bible in the last 340 years, that was a famous headline, I think in Selling Bibles, which is the best selling book of all time as far as I know. But here's another example, the most important global warming news, whether you believe in that or not, in the past 13 years. Now, I just made this up, but it's utilizing the template of the news hook. And then hook number five is the result headline. And these are just five. There are many, many more. You'll get 27 in just a moment. But an example is 101, the 161 delicious recipes to cook a gourmet meal in your home. So the number that you're using, the results is you're getting, a, this is a combination of a number headline, 161, and then the result is a gourmet meal at home. Now, if you want to learn how to cook gourmet meals for your family, then that headline could be interesting to you, and it's probably selling a cookbook. Hook number six is the promise headline. Now, this is one of my favorite because it's so easy. Give me two hours, and I'll show you how to triple your reading speed. Now, that's just one example. Give me 30 minutes, and I'll teach you how to write world-class headlines. Now, that could be the promise headline for this masterclass. So know the different hooks, and if you utilize them time after time after time, then you're gonna be more successful with your profits and prospecting. Now, the universal rule to creating headlines, what is it? The universal rule to creating headlines is that there is no universal rule. <laughs> That's really important. There is no universal rule that I know of in writing headlines. It's using certain rules that work, which I'm giving you, and discarding other rules that don't work, such as false assumptions. So remember, the, the only universal rule I know of, the only universal law that I know of, is there is no universal law that's all-encompassing. There is no universal rule. There is no go-to rule that you can have work again and again and again. If you make the assumption that there is a universal rule, then I think it's going to cause you more pro uh, trouble and struggle. If you understand that there are no universal rules in writing headlines, then you can test headlines based on um, some of the tips and strategies I'm giving you and the templates, and you will find that you'll get more success with your prospects and turning them into profits. So the two-word definition to writing headlines, in my opinion, in closing, is applied psychology. Headline creation is about psychology. Headline creation is about hooking someone's mind, which is really their heart, and then following up by um, uh, give them, giving them logic, the head, win the heart, and the head will follow. Hook the heart, and then the head follows. Now, for the mind, when people say your mind, to me, that's the head and the heart, you know, combined. Um, in the Far East, when you say, where's your mind, they point to their heart. In the West, like here in, the, in North America, uh, when you say, where's your mind, they point to the head. To me, the mind is the heart and the head together collectively, but the brain inside the head, that's the logical tool you have. The heart is the emotional tool. If you hook them emotionally, then you can uh, give them logic afterwards so that you can hook them rationally. Now, if you want to get access to the 27 headline templates I utilize, and many of my students have utilized over the years since I created them, what I did is I scoured all of the ads I could get my hands on, and I found 27 headline templates that have been reoccurring, and um, they're revisited, they're uttered, um, they're on video, they're written, okay? Um, I've collectively done this and, and uh, created templates out of them, giving you examples. If you want to get that document, it's a PDF document, it's two pages, but probably worth billions of dollars in uh, products and services sold, if you have a, a mobile phone in North America, then this is the fastest way to get it. Um, I want you to text the number 415-980-3555. Text that number, 415-980-3555.
And then in the message is a keyword in order to get the special link for the PDF document. This is if you have a mobile phone in North America, and I want you to text the keyword headlines where the message would normally go in your text, and you'll get it instantly sent back to your mobile phone. Now, if you're outside of North America, which for my viewership, over 50% of my people are outside of North America, then simply go to marketingonline.com forward slash headlines, marketingonline.com forward slash headlines, and you'll get access to that two page document, which I hope you will laminate and putting it back to back and take it everywhere you go, because there isn't any time that is a bad time for you to speak or write or to uh, create videos in headlines. Remember, capturing attention is more important than selling the product because you won't sell your product or service unless you got someone's attention, which is the purpose of a headline. And my final point is headlines, headline fluency. Okay, fluency means you're really good at it. And not literacy, but fluency. Headline fluency is only possible um, when you're analyzing the competition. It's only possible through competitive analysis. So what's the best way for you to be a good headline writer or creator is check out other people in your industry and what they're doing. Check out what they're writing. Check out what ads keep coming up again and again and again. And if you do that, then you'll find out what headlines are working and then you can use a derivation of that and ultimately you will become more successful through competitive analysis. Don't try to be original, that's dangerous. Be a competitive analyzer. I'm Alex Mondosi and I hope our paths cross again soon. Good luck with the template, good luck with headlines and I hope I read your headlines online one time in the future. All good wishes.